Hi, and welcome to my channel where I am documenting my progress of breeding a line of white colored guppies that breed true. This video will be an update on Cross 9. Unfortunately though, I don't have any fry from either of the two females that I crossed with Gandalf. This is odd to me, and I will talk about what I think happened and what my plan will be with this cross in the future. But before diving too deep into this update video, I want to thank everyone that has joined me in this journey so far. I reached 1000 subscribers this week, which is a milestone I didn't think I'd reach for a long while yet. So thank you. And thank you to those that have also liked and commented on the videos. It has had more impact on me than I thought it would have. I have further plans for this breeding project besides the all white color. I plan on trying to introduce different traits such as tail and pectoral fin types, but I must first establish this line to breed true. Having the skill to do that will allow me to always return to this baseline when I introduce a particular trait from a guppy strain that looks completely different. All right, so for those that are just joining now, we are in the middle of a series of back crosses with a single male we named Gandalf. Gandalf is our only guppy that had any white color, and we intentionally crossed him to four females that didn't share any of his characteristics. Here is a chart that shows our current crosses so far. Crosses 4 and 9 are the most relevant for this video. In the previous video where I introduced cross 9, we introduced Gandalf to our females and began patiently waiting for the fry to come. I picked the healthiest females from the brood in cross 4, and I will label them as C4A females. These females had red tails, which was a common characteristic that showed up in all the broods from crosses 1 through 4. These females are gray based and have a half black characteristic that is similar to our C1A females from cross 1. However, the half black of our C4A females is deeper and darker. The five main traits that we have discussed in depth are also still at play here. These are the magenta, storsbach, European blau, half black, and base body color traits. Like our C1A females, we could assume that our C4A females are heterozygous for all these traits. We can therefore expect their offspring to have 16 different color combinations. I won't be going into depth about how these 16 combinations come about, but the card linked in the corner is for the video where I did. I was really looking forward to this cross because of the deep half black color, and if everything had gone according to plan, we should have had fry that were nearly two months old now. However, neither of our C4A females gave birth to any fry. So here are some of the details. On March 16th, I noticed that one of the females looked like she was giving birth, but all she dropped were unfertilized eggs. If she dropped any viable fry, I kind of assumed that they were eaten because I didn't see any. On April 8th, this same female looked like she was about to give birth again, so I placed her into a breeder box so I could save the fry. Again, she only dropped unfertilized eggs. And what you are seeing now are those same eggs. On April 15th, the other female looked like she was about to give birth, so I placed her into the breeder box too. Yet, she also dropped unfertilized eggs, just like her sister. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what is going on. All the water parameters are normal, and my water changers are regular. The only explanation that I could come up with is that Gandalf is starting to, well, slow. I got him as a young adult fish in February of last year, so he is well over a year and a half old now. He is starting to look his age, and perhaps he just could fertilize the eggs. I'd be curious to know what y'all think. One explanation that I came across was that the females might have self-aborted if they felt that the conditions were unfavorable. But in that case, I would have likely seen some of the eggs developed further along instead of them looking like, well, ordinary eggs. Another possibility was that the females themselves could have been too old. This is indeed possible, but the wrench in that theory 
is that I introduced female C2A to Gandalf around the same time as C4A females. She is a couple months older than the C4A females, and she is the mother to cross eight, and her brood was born normally. I placed Gandalf back in with our C4A females a little over a month ago, and he is still in the same tank with them today. I am expecting to see one of the females drop some fry this week, if Gandalf was finally able to fertilize them. If she drops unfertilized eggs again, I will likely have to consider retiring Gandalf. This is sad news, but I do have some nice white males from Cross 5 that can take his place here with the C4A females. We will see what happens. I also placed a virgin female from Cross 5 in with Gandalf and our C4A females. If Gandalf is indeed no longer viable, we should expect this new female to drop unfertilized eggs too. I will call this female C5A. If Gandalf is still viable, this will be cross 10 and our final back cross to Gandalf. I will officially introduce this cross in a different video. Hopefully Gandalf can come through, but in any case, I will need to start planning future crosses without him. I have several other crosses that I plan on circling back to, and I will focus on cross number 5 in the next video. This brood is pretty much all colored up, and I will begin the process of selecting the best males and females to cross with my other lines. So, if this is something that you find interesting, please consider sticking around. And again, thank you to those that have already joined in on this journey. Here are some short update clips on my other crosses so far. Cross 7 still only has a small number of males, with none of them having the all-white characteristic that we are after. I will likely choose one of the females in this brood to cross with a male from Cross 5. Cross 6 is growing, and some of the males do have that all-white characteristic. I have yet to decide if I will be using a male or a female from Cross 5 to set up a future cross with this brood. Cross 8 is growing every day, and some of the fry are beginning to show some of the iridescence from the Storzbach gene. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.